Yo, what is up guys? My name's Stingy Roger. You're watching the Blood, Sweat and Gears YouTube channel. So today, I want to touch on something that I've already seen a few YouTubers in the UK make. Where can you legally ride your Teleria Sting or Sauron or other e-bike? Now, anything I say in this video, please take it with a pinch of salt. If I get anything wrong, leave it in the comment section below. And please do not get yourselves in trouble. This video is purely for educational purposes only. So in the UK, riding these bikes on the road, unless they are road legal with an MOT insurance and road tax, which is free, but you still have to fill out the form, is illegal. Now, this class is as a motoring uh, conviction, similar to if you were driving a car and you had no insurance tax or MOT, they will issue you points, you could lose your license, they'll seize the bike. So yeah, definitely do not do that. Everything I'm about to tell you now about riding off-road do so at your own risk. Now, in the UK, we do actually have very different laws to the USA. So if you're from the USA, this isn't really relevant to you, but you might still find it interesting anyway. So in the UK, trespass is not illegal. Trespass is actually a civil offence, which means that it's between the trespassee and the landowner. Now, if you have a look on the Gov website, it will tell you that the only place you can ride these bikes or any motorised vehicle is on private land. But, due to trespass not being criminal offence, it's not illegal for you to ride these bikes on someone else's private land. A bit like if someone was to park on your driveway at your house, you can't really do anything about it legally and the police will not get involved. I'm sure some of you may have even had this happen before. You can also park across someone's driveway. It's technically not against the law and the police will not get involved. It's between you and the person that has parked there. You can ride anywhere that is privately owned. Now this does not include a park, a forest, anything that is council owned or anything that is owned by the government, it must be privately owned, such as a field, such as uh, your own back garden, such as your friend's track. As long as it is privately owned by an individual, you can technically ride there. Now, if you get in an altercation with a landowner, it, it is best case you leave. The reason being is that if the police are called, what they can do is they can issue you a section 59. Now, section 59 is a antisocial behavior order against your bike. Now it is against the bike rather than the person, but if it happens twice within six months, you can have your bike seized and have to pay a fine to get it back from the police. Now this could be 200 or 400 pounds. I've heard different stories here and there, it varies, but some people think they're safe because they're in a car park, but that car park is owned by the council and then the police can get involved. It's no longer trespass. Now, say for example, you're on farmer's land, you have to be very courteous. You want to stay to the headland, which is the outside of the field. You do not want to go on the crops. If you go on the crops, the farmers are going to get really annoyed. Now, I'm very lucky where I live, um, my family and friends, and I have permission basically to ride on lots and lots of land. So when you see my videos, I'm actually riding on private roads owned by my family or family friends or land I have permission to be on. With that in mind, you always need to be careful. Sometimes farmers give you a wave, they say hi, they don't care as long as you're not on their crops. But if you do get caught on their crops, they call the police and they issue you a section 59. They can also take you to court for loss of earnings. Now, loss of earnings means you've destroyed their crops. I think there is a minimum value on how much it has to be before it can be a court claim, but you just don't want to get in that situation at all because you're drawing attention to yourselves. If you are going to take your bike into a forest, I really do advise you that you stay slow and courteous of all the walkers that are coming past. As you can see, my bike looks like a motorbike, but before I made the video of where I updated all the parts on my bike, it used to look more, much more like a mountain bike. That's because I didn't have the front mud guard. I didn't have all these uh, racing livery on it. I just had a uh, basic camouflage pattern and it kind of blended in if you went past people slowly enough they wouldn't really look at you twice the reason why i wear this helmet as well as you can see it's not full face that's because i don't look like i'm riding a motorbike if i'm out not filming i won't be wearing the balaclava either i just look like a normal sort of mountain biker in his mountain bike gear i do recommend though that you wear boots but just bear this in mind it will help you fly under the radar if you are out on the trails if you have a low profile bike you have uh, mountain biking gear on i do recommend wearing boots but you can also wear mountain bike trainers this is what i used to do for many many years but i have caught my ankle on a few stumps another thing to remember is that if you are going to buy a teleria or so on you can also opt for the road legal version now the road legal version is a great alternative to this bike it does cost more but it has 
front headlight, rear headlight, uh, sorry, front headlight, rear light, it has indicators, it has a brake light, it has a horn, it has a speedometer, it comes with a logbook, so you can legally ride it on the road. Now, if you were, got, if you are uh, an older person, say you're 40 to 50, you have uh, the ability to ride a road legal Sauron on an L plate for a year before doing your CBT. All you have to do is make sure you have insurance. Now, once this year is up, you have to take your CBT and then you can ride it without an L plate. If you are younger than that, you will need to do a CBT before you have access to one of these and the insurance can be very, very costly. But for peace of mind, you'll always be road legal. Now, what does this mean? It means when you go off road, you now have a number plate on the back. So people are going to see it as a motorbike and they are going to report you. With this bike being what it is, it's technically classed as a moped, so it can't exceed 29 miles per hour, which is why if you've bought a brand new Telerio Sauron before, you have to cut the wire. This is past EU regulations so that in the UK, you can ride it road legal. If you get caught going over this speed, it is obviously going to be punishable because you are technically riding a bike you don't have the license for. So it's the same as driving the bike without even having a license. You just don't do it. Of course, if you have a full license, I believe you can register these as a 125 or even higher. It goes by power output. So I know uh, Francis over at Electron Cycles, he sent me this jumper after watching my uh, video review on his battery. He has a extremely fast one and he has a full bike license. So it's registered as it should be as a proper bike. So guys, some of the keener eyed people amongst you watch my channel may have noticed these swing arm extensions on my bike. Now these are the Vanguard Garage uh, 3.5 inch swing arm extensions. Now I did purchase these off their website uh, when I was doing my build and they kindly attached another set in the package. So they gave me two sets and a nice note saying please give one of these away to your subscribers or followers. So in the next video keep your eye out there will be a giveaway you can win these. Uh, these cost me £200 shipped to the UK so they're quite a valuable item. And yeah I'll announce uh, how to enter the giveaway next video. But yeah, thanks Vanguard Garage for providing me with these so that I can give them away to one of my subscribers. They are fantastic. I'm just doing a shakedown run at the moment. And once I've uh, gathered my thoughts on them, I'll do a full review on them next week. I have some other parts come in. I have a drop crown being made. I did have a prototype one done, but uh, yeah, it, the drill bit got snapped inside it. So yeah, guys, I hope you found today's video useful. As always, my name's Stingy Roger. You've been watching the Blood, Sweat and Gears YouTube channel. If you found it useful, leave me a thumbs up. Drop down in the comment section below if you think I missed anything out. I hope this helped any of you guys out that had a bit of uh, a query on where you can and can't ride. Or maybe you're someone that's looking into getting a bike and whether it's worth it based on the law. But yeah. So as always, my name's Stingy Roger. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.